Okay, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to this week's session of Intuitions. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, uh, Intuitions is a weekly chat show uh, organized by Youth 2.0, where we have some informal conversations uh, about topics that are very relevant but aren't spoken about too much. Um, so for this week, our topic is Habits of Happiness. And uh, I'm joined by two wonderful people, uh, Radha and Keshwa. And in today's session, we'll be sharing some of our uh, personal experiences and also some practical tips that have uh, helped us improve our personal happiness quotient. Um, and uh, maybe before we start, um, I'll introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Upasana. I'm from Chennai. Uh, I have a master's in aerospace engineering. I currently work at GE Research and uh, I've been practicing heartfulness for about uh, eight years now. And um, yeah, I'm very happy to join you guys today and share some of my thoughts. Yeah, Keshwa, would you like to introduce yourself next? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Keshav Gita Kumar, and I've been a heartfulness practitioner for around five to six years now. And um, in the professional side of things, I am the CEO and uh, founder of Riverbed Entertainment and Labyrinth Studios. And um, I'm a filmmaker and a music composer. In terms of education, I, uh, I'm doing my undergraduate at Ryerson University here in Toronto, Canada. Hi everyone, I'm Radha, uh, an architect with master's degree in architecture interior design. And uh, I've been practicing heart full of meditation for the last 10 years and I'm a heart fullness trainer as well. And yeah, that's, that's my introduction. Okay, great. Uh, it's great to have you guys here. Um, so just to, um, you know, uh, talk a little bit about the last few months. Uh, I mean, it's been very different for all of us, uh, to say the least. And um, we've had a lot of changes that we've had to adapt to, a lot of challenges as well. And um, personally, uh, when I look back at how I spent, you know, the lockdown, um, I have I've just started to realize, you know, that uh, I had a lot of uh, time to introspect, uh, a lot of time to myself. Um, I had uh, had time to try out things that I've always wanted to do, uh, you know, catch up on things. Uh, for example, I got to call a lot of my old friends and get connected with them again. And um, also, I got to try out some things that I never even wanted to do. Like I started a YouTube channel, and uh, I never knew that uh, you know I wanted to do that. Um, so you know that kind of got me thinking that uh, when we, when we, whenever we face with challenges, we uh, kind of try to find uh, the positive side of things, right? And there are always these little things that we can do to uh, that help us focus more on the positive um, to kind of give us a happiness boost. Um, so that's, uh, you know, kind of what uh, I took away from this uh, lockdown uh, experience when I look back at it. Uh, what do you guys think? How has your uh, lockdown experience been? I think it's gone pretty good so far. I don't know how much longer these things are going to be. In the beginning, it was difficult because we were all running around doing our busy life, you know, going through our busy life. But after that, um, I... I think, you know, despite the bad stuff going on in the world or the more negative stuff, in a way, the lockdown was good because I finally got some time for myself and to even spend time with some loved ones. And, you know, I try forming new habits every day to make myself better than what I was. Um, so, like, for example, you know, I, I've started to realize that I shouldn't look at my phone before I go to bed. You know, so every day, half an hour before I sleep and half an hour after I wake up, I tend not to put any information in my head, you know, just, just come up with little, little changes and habits to make myself a better person than I was. So for me, lockdown has been pretty, um, pretty fun, actually, because I have an eight-month-old baby. So initially, when all of us were home, everyone was just having so much fun with the baby around, and uh, we were all uh, unaware of the situation of lockdown, to say. But slowly as it progressed, we realized it's so important to have a routine set in and have something productive coming out of it because it's so much time all of a sudden in our busy lives that we have. Uh, one sweet thing that I did during this lockdown is every evening I went on a walk with my son. He would be in his pram and it was like both of us would be really silent and to each other and enjoy the nature. And it was some. It was a very beautiful connecting moment that we enjoyed during that time. 
i started a youtube channel as well to pass on yeah that's good i i totally understand what you mean uh, i mean i also started realizing that you know there are these little things that you can do that you know just help you slow down uh, take a pause and uh, you know just experience uh, uh, you know live in the moment and experience the life around us um something there's a one habit that i started you know while working from home uh, sometimes you can just you know be working continuously on stretch uh, you don't get as many breaks uh, as you do while you're actually at work in office um, and you know that's when i developed this little habit of you know just uh, kind of taking a break picking up my guitar and uh, you know just playing for a little while and that's i mean i found personally for me that's something that i enjoy doing and it kind of keeps me engaged but uh, also gives me you know like uh, refreshes my mind and kind of clears my mind uh, you know uh, just it's a it's a very little thing that uh, you know just kind of refreshes me and makes me more productive when i get back to work actually so yeah you know, it's very important that you in, in a way kind of have something to detach yourself from you know whatever is going on and really focus on yourself and what you are in the moment and a guitar trust me is a great way to do that the one more thing that i realized that um, during lockdown actually in a very inspiring quote that got me going towards my youtube channel also is that every great idea just remains an idea until we execute it you know So I felt like even small ideas. Why not just go ahead and execute it? What's stopping us? This is this time that we have right now is so potent that we can just do whatever we feel like, you know. And it we never know what clicks and what just does really well. Very true. That's true. Yeah. yeah and i think like uh, you know this is this is the time you know because we have so much time to introspect uh, you know i think uh, just looking at looking back at these things for example the whole you know just playing a guitar or just you know picking up a book and reading it uh, these were some things that uh, i kind of developed unconsciously i didn't develop it consciously but you know as i looked back at it later i realized these uh, you know they actually um, have a value they you know have an effect on me uh, you know they make me more more positive um and you know i think so we can you know this is what we can call you know habits of happiness which kind of a little habits which uh, you know help us get back on track you know which uh, help us uh, see our happy happy side so uh, what do you guys think have you guys also had some you know little habits uh, that you realized can boost your happiness I feel like the biggest habit that I have kind of adopted is to be happy. Um, you know, because things around us are so slow and you know, you don't know what's going on, but I realized that all I have in control is not my past or my future, but now. So I realized that if I'm not happy now, I can't be happy in the future or you know, I wasn't happy in the past. So I think the biggest kind of habit I've formed is just looking at everything as an opportunity. rather than obstacle there is you know despite whatever is good or bad in your life there is always no amount of opportunity hidden in it so my habit that i've formed is to really forget about what i know and focus on what i don't know yet or what i want to know and just go in pursuit of that in whatever way and form i can whether that be through making music every day writing exploring the world listening to my grandmother speak about her life stories I mean we we can't top that right we need to know more about our own loved ones so those those are kind of little, little things i like to do is explore the world around us because yes we're in a lockdown but we still have plenty of things that we can explore in this world i do really like how you said happiness is a habit and i think that's a it's so true happiness is a habit i also started one more small thing uh, during this lockdown i started making a journal in which i put in my uh, moods you know i call it like my mood tracker journal so uh that helps me look at the activities that are actually help me be happy during the day or those activities which create an angry mood or you know so i i'm able to over time know what really boosts my mood and what doesn't so i think that's a really um, nice practice i got in recent days yeah uh, yeah i i i agree with what you say like uh, you know happiness is a is a happiness is a habit in itself and um, i think uh, you know the way i i look at it is uh, you know if we should try to be happy in the moment um, 
uh, if you think of happiness as a goal in the you know in the future it kind of uh, feels like you're working towards something instead of just being happy in the moment uh, and something that has really helped me try to be happy in the moment is um uh, it's very little thing but i realize you know when i'm doing something um uh, uh just to focus on what i'm doing instead of you know try to think about what i could be doing instead or um what i would like to do later uh what i like to do better than this you know things like that instead of that just focusing uh you know right now in the moment um, that really helps me you know be satisfied and you know also give my all to what i'm doing right now so i think that's really helped me uh, you know be more happy with what i'm doing yeah I feel like all of us are, you know, running according to however you know society functions. For example, we work a job. You know, we're all as a group going towards working or doing whatever we have to do. But kind of this lockdown puts a break on all of that. And yes, it is a bit disruptive, but what that allows us is to give time to what we want to do, what we believe, right? Rather than running together towards whatever goal we want to, we're like, all right, slow down. Now is your time. What do you want to do? right so in a way a lockdown is it, it is a bit of a problem because you're not able to have that routine of that life but at the same time i think it's a golden opportunity given to us on by nature or whatever it is to really rethink our lives and say who are we right i also think initially during the initial period of lockdown uh, we got a nice opportunity to spend with ourselves but slowly the need for other people also crept in you know to have uh, loved ones around you and uh, to interact with people mm-hmm. luckily i should say we are in a visual era so we could connect online you know i really wonder what would have happened otherwise i feel bad for the people in 1918 in the spanish flu when oh, yeah. zoom wasn't Absolutely. around skype wasn't around like what are you going to do yeah. like yell across the window <laughs> yeah yeah but you know we yeah, have yeah yeah we're really lucky we can still stay connected uh you know it's virtual exactly very yes. true so with our knowledge people around us and society around us play such an important role right in keeping us um sane and happy yeah that's true i should to share one small experience you know my son um i noticed it in him that if he sees me smiling he smiles and if i see him smile like i smile or everyone at home smiles that just shows me that our reaction and our interaction to the society actually help uh, us either create like an effect on the society or get an effect from the society you know either of the two i feel like the definition of an individual person is so changing because i get literally on a biological level genes from my father and mother um you know there's a very famous saying that you know um show me a man's friend and i'll tell you who the man is right so the people who we grow up with the influences i what other be my vocabulary the way i react to things my interest in a way subconsciously we follow you know you know we kind of grow on what's the people that we interact with so anyway you are right that you know that that craving to you know be with a community is increasing and i think kind of the first step of that is just accepting who you are first before even approaching the community right because it's like if all of us are very strong in who we are as a community we can come together accept those differences similarities whatever and really come together as one right that one individual should be a community rather than this one person yeah yeah i totally agree uh, and i think actually that uh, you know kind of um, reminds me of uh, you know this thing i read about the, you know the the circle of uh, concerns and then uh, you know so that's basically a circle of all of your concerns everything that you're concerned about and how from your circle of concern you can actually identify the things that um, you can actually influence the things that are under your control and and then you can further kind of filter it out into the things that are directly under your control which is you know things that are your personal self you know the things that you can develop in yourself uh, and then there are things which are in your circle of influence which is uh, more like you know uh, things that you can develop by improving your interpersonal relationships uh, you know being more empathetic with people uh, 
and you know just uh, just improving the way you interact and respond with uh, you know the society and people around you uh, and that's been something that i've you know tried to actively practice and as the first step i feel like um, you know like you were saying the first step is uh, accepting ourselves um, you know so um, you know when whenever you take a concern when you have a concern first figure it out uh, you know um, what can i actually control and if it doesn't concern me maybe just let it go because i can't do much about it but um you know, but if i do have it under my control if i can change it uh, you know probably focus on that and uh, accept the fact that you know this is something that i can change and kind of try to see how we can change it and uh, that has really helped me uh, kind of uh, accept myself and also look forward to how i can improve myself you know when you talk about uh, accepting yourself and improving yourself i also think that during this period of lockdown especially when all of us uh, had so much time at hand and we tried to do so many different things there are so many things that we couldn't achieve as well you know uh, and that kind of put a set back into our mind saying that oh my god i for example uh, let me just say with my baby again i was not able to uh, Uh, do a certain certain things like maybe wake up at the same time every day that's something i wanted to do but i was unable to do it but uh, i feel that doesn't what that usually does it it results in a small form of guilt inside you that you've not done something but to accept yourself that your current situation isn't permitting a few things is absolutely okay you know when time permits you will get there it's not everything to say our every year we make new year resolutions but sometimes we repeat the same resolution every year <laughs> yeah it's it's okay not to be able to achieve everything as we want to exactly and i and i think one of the things when you talk about concerns and what we can control like i'm going to be honest with you um and i had this for longest of time especially during the lockdown is when it really hit me as a reality check is that for the longest time i cared a little too much about what people whether that be family or community or society who think about my actions and who I am right especially from the point of view of an artist for example i had the longest time i had a writer's block um i couldn't sit and do any music i can do anything because every time i picked up that pen i'm like oh if i make this this way people will react to this this way or they will think i am this way or even in my own personal life when things happened rather than thinking what is best for me i always thought about what is best for me if i project myself this way so that people understand me um and then you know when you're locked down when you sit in your room and you're like i can go out to meet anyone or see anyone temporarily that really puts things into check that hey at the end of the day the only person who's actually you know there for you until the beginning and the end is you that's the first person that comes in then you know of course family and everyone is there so i think the first step towards accepting yourself is essentially living for yourself right it's not to say that we should never consider a family or society we definitely should but i think one of the things we always have to do is assess at what cost for my own self am i considering people or family or community because at the end of the day you might live for everyone and do everything for anyone and then during the last you know moments of your life you know what's going to go on in your mind oh i helped this person do this or oh my god i wish if i only i did this thing in my life right so it's like i feel like if you really you know accept yourself and do something for yourself that's when you come to a position where you understand that i've kept myself happy and now it's my time to keep my mother happy or my family happy or anyone in the society happy or how can we love or how can we love someone or be happy and help someone if we don't love ourselves first right yeah yeah i totally agree that's 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 wonderful because uh, i've had a similar experience when i when i started realizing you know the more i introspect about myself uh, the more i understand about you know um, my strengths and my weaknesses and learn to accept myself and you know as radha was saying also forgive myself when i don't do certain things um, it also helps me become uh, you know more empathetic to other people as well you know um, uh just as i'm able to you know accept uh, my shortcomings and you know uh, see that i'm also just like a work in progress right uh that helps me also uh, look at other people like that uh i don't necessarily have to you know um 
I don't I don't have to expect the best in people because I think we usually um, uh, respond to people in a certain way where we think oh why did they do this to me but you know uh, if we can probably look at it from their perspective uh, they probably have a lot going on and uh, you know all we need is to try to understand why they would have done it and also just kind of forgive themselves because not everybody does everything right uh, right and not think too much into it not worry too much about it uh, just uh, you know love people anyway uh, so i think that's that's actually uh, you know helped me a lot and you know learning to love myself uh, and uh, extrapolating that to loving others as well you know one more thing that really makes us love others is when we when we reflect on our day say and you realize that you have so much support so much help and everyone you just feel so grateful for so many things around you you know i think that also helps you uh, love others more when you realize what they're doing for you you'll be like oh my god thank you so much and i think it's worth making a note of what all uh, what all we are grateful for you know a day when we are really not up to it and we look at that list and we are like oh my god really there's so much in life to be thankful for and cheerful for life is really kind on all of us i think it's one of those things where sometimes when your life hits hard especially uh you're like oh my god the you essentially for sometimes the world revolves around you where you become the center of all the adversity in your life oh my god how did i go through this whatever right but for example when i think about my own parents right they have never said a word to me about their difficulties but when when people tell me about them you know how you know they've basically left everything they had and come to a new country just for the sake of their children right that's this is an example right and when i you know like for the longest time i always told them you guys never understand what i go through you have no idea when in reality i never took a second to understand what they have been through for all these years and kept quiet about it right so i think like just like um, mr rada said that when you realize and you're grateful for things you live life with a greater sense of purpose and gratitude you know and i think it's a very important part and that's in a way accepting yourself as well where do you come from i think if you understand where you come from you know you have a much more stronger clarity in your life yeah i i agree i think gratitude can i mean it really like rather was saying right if we just let us make a note of it and really keep reminding ourselves of the things we're grateful for it can really change our uh, outlook of uh, outlook of you know how we look at the world how we look at the people around us uh, cuz i think it's very easy to forget um, you know the things that we're grateful for uh it's it's easy to forget uh you know the challenges even challenges that we've overcome the achievements in the past and it's easy to just you know go down into this negativity um you know bubble where uh you know you're you're confused and you feel uh you know maybe uh, not you feel like you're not getting certain things but you know really uh, making a note of you know all the great things you've done um, all the great people who've you know helped you in achieving those things it, it really helps us keep a positive outlook you know no matter what what challenge we're facing it it kind of you know creates a record that okay i've been able to do all this and i've had so much support from all of these people so maybe i can face uh, this next challenge too yeah very true very true the yeah, support system and strength to drive you ahead exactly and i think you like you said having the journals are important because when you're angry you know chances are you're not going to think about you know at this level of deepness but if you have some sort of record or something that says all right buddy come back to reality look what you have you know yeah. i think that really helps you in that moment and i think it's a very beautiful thing to have a journal or some sort of documentation of you know accepting the fact that you at one point accept and believe that you have a support system yeah you know there's one more uh, very interesting thought that i was thinking uh, that i had uh this happiness question that we're talking about sometimes it's so ex- we are so dependent on external things to give us that happiness quotient you know i uh, i really wonder why our dependence is so much outside and when i was um, expecting my baby and my baby would kick i would be like you know i can't control this thing that's inside me and decide when the baby is going to kick you know how can i really control anyone outside me and decide that they should act in a certain way this this thought process you know helped me expand my uh, horizon to accepting the way people behave 
and i think acceptance is again a key to being happy right you guys agree yeah yeah totally i think was, yeah it just seems to come down to uh, accepting accepting ourselves accepting uh, people around us and you know just being content i guess uh, seems like that's what that's all we need actually yeah and even like the idea of connecting with society for example like especially with youth you know that's definitely um this is a point that we all need to understand for example right i applied to university a couple of years ago um when i applied they said that these many people apply a year only these this percent of people you know get in or even people who say that hey buddy by this age i want to start this business i want to get up and running and i'm like that's a great goal to have but what happens is you know we talk about being selfless and and loving people and everything but our whole lives are kind of built upon being better than the person behind us or a guy comes and says that you know i want to start a business by now i want to be an artist i want to make my first big break by the age of 27 this is an example right he might have worked all his life been very fair to himself worked every second because of something like covid that dream eventually is delayed or even gone and i've seen many people who have been extremely upset at the fact that i worked all these years for something and now because of something i cannot control my happiness goes down because that's all i thought it was right so rather than striving to you know excel in something that's personal to your heart or just be a better person than tomorrow a lot of people place their happiness under material desires or something that is not really in their control if you think about it right so i think like you know so that said that it's important to be happy inside more than outside because at the end of the day you really can't control anything other than your efforts your reactions and basically that right 90% of your life i don't know where i read this but they said 90% of your life is just your reactions to the 10% that you live right so i think the only thing you have in control is yourself so let's focus on that actually i read a very interesting um, actually not read but i've come across a very interesting statement you know an example suppose someone likes ice creams and 10 people go out to a shop and you give them all ice creams it might be five or six people who are really happy with eating an ice cream and three four who are not also so uh, where is the happiness is it in the person or in the ice cream you know <laughs> actually it's it's inside us right i mean yes it's kind of true yeah that's that's true that's a really nice thought i think that you know that we could be happy about anything if we just want to be happy right Uh, and i think that brings us back to uh, you know happiness itself is a habit i mean pro- we probably need to focus on cultivating happiness just um, you know like you said uh, the in, like in your ice cream story i think that just brings out the fact that you know it's not ice cream that gives happiness it's just uh, you know that we have dedicated our happiness towards ice cream and if we can just you know find happiness within ourselves uh, we can probably be happy whether ice cream or not right so yeah actually to uh, add to that i've also heard this version where they say imagine your day really went well and someone gave you an ice cream you're very happy with it and imagine you're having a really tough time dealing with your own mind and someone offered you an ice cream and you'd be like oh, not right now the same ice cream can bring about two reactions right. <laughs> yeah so true yeah. it's about finding your version of the ice cream not the ice cream itself right yeah one person to be happy the one person to be so it's about like essentially finding your own route right and it's not just about liking what other people need to like or what the society demands you to be in i think if you find your own internal ice cream you might have 10 different ice creams on different days you're sad all right this is my ice cream you're happy this is ice cream i don't know why we've been mentioning ice cream so much but it is a beautiful <laughs> thing yeah it's, it's about finding for example like i uh during this lockdown you know a lot of the times you feel that isolation um honestly did and for example i said right, the only companion other apart from family and friends is going to be my music so what i did is i actually created called a survival playlist right and essentially for different moods of the day and different activities i created these playlists and i keep listening to those songs again and again and you know a month or two in the moment i listen to that my brain is about all right buddy time to work or all right time to go to sleep or you know essentially building your own tool to survive right i think it's a very important thing 
habits are formed like that right repeated uh, doing of an action is what forms a habit okay. i think i read somewhere it takes 21 days to form a habit really? yeah. so if happiness is a habit and 21 days of happiness and yeah. <laughs> habit to get us there yeah yeah <laughs> this then gets me to thinking you know uh, if everything is so much dependent on what is inside us the way we react to people the way we react to a situation the way we react to happiness everything then uh then how is it uh, if we become like the sea you know where deep down it's all calm and untouched by external things and there are waves on the top and still so your happiness deep down is intact irrespective of what's happening outside do you i think we're yeah. all just deep down like we all have diamonds within us right and whatever our stresses are just like the dirt on it right so it's about wiping off that dirt and seeing the diamond that a lot of us are striving towards right and i think very important for us to take that time and really assess yeah just like you said going down deep and you know beneath the waves and seeing who we are and i think introspection is one of the things that we lack because of you know our lives are busy i come back from a tough day at work but what i'm going to sit down and introspect but that introspection of who you are is such an important thing because even when you're stressed or going deep down and realizing who you are can basically change the entire way you live right and it's like it's essentially like entropy i i still haven't understood it entropy fully but essentially it's about you know hitting our maximum you know like and and we're all equal and we're all diffuse right if, if as a community for example we're saying how can we love each other how can we do all those things right hit that maximum point of entropy or whatever you might call it i think it begins at the lowest point which is delving deeper down and understanding ourselves so that when someone else comes tomorrow i have a better understanding of myself and i can help that other person and then it's a chain reaction right so i think just like that said it's a very important thing to introspect and realize who you are yeah yeah i agree i mean i i love the way you you know uh, put it uh, how we have this you know this uh, calm and uh, peaceful center deep inside uh, you know no matter uh, the turbulent ocean around uh, if we just you know get in touch with that calm and deep center inside us uh, you know we can we can still find the peace um, in any situation and um you know i think that's that's beautiful uh, that's a beautiful thought on how you know if we just connect to that center stay connected to that center we are um, more equipped to you know deal with society better um, help others out and you know i guess uh, like you say the first step to you know, you know um, start helping other people out is um, helping ourselves finding ourselves first and uh, and that will actually help us create a positive environment around us uh, and a happy and positive environment helps each of us uh, you know with our personal well being as well develop positively grow yeah so i feel meditation as a tool that we have since i've been practicing it for 10 years i can see how much it has helped me in staying in touch with that uh deep down ocean you can say you know deep down center mm-hmm. i feel like especially after uh, when we have any change in life uh I have a baby now and that's a pretty big change or that we have this lockdown and that's also a pretty big change that we have experienced it's very difficult to uh, adapt to any change that comes in life but personally for me it's not been such a difficult journey i feel like this tool of meditation that i have has really helped me stay uh, balanced happy and connected throughout all these situations if you try yeah. to look there is good in everything you know yeah i i totally agree uh, i mean i think when uh, i mean I, i've also felt how meditation has helped me especially you know uh, handle all of these changes we've had uh, because of the pandemic i think it's um, it's very nice to find uh, even if all the world is changing around you, you you know you just close your eyes and go into yourself and you find that is still there for you it's not changed and i think that really helps you you know get the strength to uh, face any external change uh, really is you know you know that there's that constant inside you so i think that really helps to, to find our feet actually you know to find that stable uh, region again yeah exactly and i feel like you know especially in today's world more than ever there's so much information there's so much going on in our lives 
and you're basically lost in that. But what meditation has done personally for me as well, especially I'm, I'm not like old, right? I'm, I'm still relatively young. I'm still forming my own character. I've, it's not like I've gotten anywhere big, but I think meditation really puts things in check for you and helps you understand who you are, no matter what situation you're in. And even this lockdown, it's like, I'm, you know, everything is halted in the world right now. Everything is still, but I'm still going through an internal journey that is just long and vast, right? And I think meditation kind of gives you that ability to explore yourself, no matter where you are. It could be in a huge place with a thousand people or just in your room with a locked door, right? You're still connecting to yourself. And to be honest, it's like, yes, the lockdown does make me feel isolated, but every time I meditate, I feel like I'm not really alone because I am exploring myself and who else do I need at certain times than my own self. Right? So the key to happiness kind of seems to be lying in meditation. Huh? Exactly. The happy exactly. habit seems to become meditation. <laughs> exactly. yeah. So um, shall we all uh, go through the process of relaxation and meditation to actually see how it feels to get connected with ourselves? Sure. Yeah. yeah, sure. It's morning time, so I'm going to connect back with myself now. I didn't get what you said. I know, it's saying it's morning. It's morning for me here in Canada, so it's a perfect time to connect with myself for the rest yeah. of the day. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You stay connected in the morning and throughout the day, you feel that connection and living, and living yeah. you know. Okay. Uh, so what we do is, uh, let's all sit relaxed and I'll take you through the process of relaxation and we slowly slip into the process of meditation. Meditation, we meditate for some time and then we'll connect again. Please sit relaxed and gently close your eyes. Feel the energy from Mother Earth enter your feet Relaxing your toes, any stress you're holding there, let go of it. Slowly move your attention to your calves. Feel them relax. This energy is moving up into your knees and your thighs, relaxing your entire leg. Any tension you're holding, let go. Breathe in and breathe out. Bring your attention to your abdomen. See that relax. Your chest is relaxing. Now visualize your entire back. Feel your entire back relax. From the top of your back to the tip of your tailbone. Everything is relaxing. Bring your attention to your arm. Feel your arms relax. Your fingers, your palms, your forearms, your entire hand. Feel your entire hand relax. Any tension, just let go. Bring your focus to your shoulders. Feel your shoulders melting away. Relax. Feel the energy moving up to your neck, relaxing your neck, 
your facial muscles, your cheeks, your ears, your eyes. Gently relax yourself. Now come to your mind. Relax your mind. Any stress you're holding there, let go of it. Breathe in and breathe out. Gently bring your attention to your heart. Relax into your heart. While we are still there, connected to our heart, let us gently slip into meditation. Feel the divine presence in your heart. And feel it attracting you towards itself. Sit with this idea. If you are carried away by thoughts, bring your attention back to your heart. We'll meditate now for 10 minutes or so. Please start meditation.
In any situation, it's like being happy or not happy is in our hands and it's our conscious decision. And it's a personal choice and a personal habit. Yeah, I think we need to kind of uh, just change our attitude, I guess. Right? Develop an uh, attitude of happiness uh, no matter what we are. And, uh, you know, uh, just this this wonderful experience of meditation is just a, a kind of reminder that we can be happy wherever we are uh, with anything that we have just by connecting to ourselves, right? Very good. I think understanding the resources you have around you, like what can you do, practical things that you could do, but right? change begins with habit. And habit. <clears throat> intention so i'm pretty sure all of us have intentions to change you know i think it's important for us to really list or think about what habits we can develop which will eventually turn into lifestyles and which will eventually not make happiness a habit but happiness a way of lifestyle yeah i think i think uh, i guess from our from our uh, discussion today probably we realize that you know acceptance is probably uh, one big key to you know being happy, accepting ourselves, uh, accepting others as well. Um, another, I think, really useful uh, habit that we discussed is you know kind of trying to keep a record of our strengths uh, and what we have achieved so far, uh, our support system, and that really helps us be grateful, uh, you know, for everything that we've done. And I guess also somehow gives us the courage to uh, face what's coming up next. Uh, that's uh, one thing that we discussed. Uh, and uh, we also talked about how, you know, uh, being accepting and grateful of ourselves helps us, you know, promote uh, a, a more positive environment, uh, help our community as well. Um, start with ourselves, but, you know, also try to give to the community and promote a holistic well being of, you know, the society as well. And, uh, and then we also tried out meditation, which is, uh, you know, as we all spoke about our experiences, how uh, meditation can really help us connect to our inner self and, uh, you know, give us that uh, uh, inner, inner kind of peace and inner stability that we always need to, you know, um, kind of get back, uh, you know, on track and uh, find happiness again. And so, yeah. 21 days and... Happiness is a habit. Exactly. And then it'll turn into 80 years or until the end of our lives. Happiness will become a lifestyle. Yeah. It was really nice talking to all of you today. Yeah, it was right, a I guess. Uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah, to see you later. Hopefully we can Thank catch you. up again. And, uh, Hopefully we can catch up again and see after how we are after 21 days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we should. We yeah. want me to stay safe, stay healthy, and stay happy. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.